Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of my CDK Crash Course. In today's video, I will talk about authentication with Amazon Cognito. So let's have a quick recap and look back at what we have in the previous video. From the previous video, we have successfully code and deploy an API gateway and mocked it with a lambda. It's a dummy lambda that's returned an OK response with a status of 200, as you can see from here. If I hit the endpoint now, I still received a su successfully response. I will put down the link to the previous video and also the link to the code in the description. As you can see, this is a public RESTful API. Anyone who knows the URL will be able to consume it. And this is what we don't want. Later on during this course, we will build a fully function backend system and we want only the user who have the authentication can consume our API. Let's go to VS Code and start building our authentication with CDK. Okay guys, so I just finished implementing the CDK code in order to have the Cognito authentication for our API gateway. First, I create a new Cognito class. In this class, there are two private properties, the user pool. An user pool is like an user directory where user can sign in using the Cognito user ID or some federated user accounts such as Google or Facebook or some other platform. 
and also an authorizer property, which is an authorizer for our user pool. In our constructor, I create a new user pool. The class I imported from the AWS CDK Live. The ID is user pool and the name is the to do app. Some basic setup such as removal policy, as destroy. I explained this concept from the previous video. Some other basic setup such as uh, self site enable equal true. So the user can sign up by themselves. Some basic password policy such as minimum length is six and account recovery is using the email. In order to consume the user pool, I have created a new client called user pool client with some authentication flows. You can use the admin user password. As some key points here, I want you guys to notice, which is the supported identity providers. And I use a Cognito as one of the provider. This is just for the demo purpose, but in reality, you can use some other options such as Facebook or Google. I can show you guys here. You see, I can have op Apple, Facebook, and some other options. But for now, we just use Cognito to keep it simple. And I also create a thing called an authorizer. An authorizer will be a Cognito user pool authorizer. I The ID is here, and I name it user pool authorizer and the pool gonna be the pool I created in here. Uh, get the method authorizer. And in order to integrate this Cognito class, the authentication into our API gateway, uh, in here, in our API gateway class we created from the previous video, I add a new private property authorizer. And I import the Cognito class we just created and get the authorizer from it. In the add integration method, uh, I put here authorization type as Cognito and the authorizer as the one I created from the constructor method. So let's deploy our change to the CDK stack. The command is like previous, I introduced to you guys CDK deploy. So the deployment is finished. Let's log into our AWS console. So in here, I have logged in to my AWS console. If you go to the Cognito tab and manage user pools. So Amazon Cognito, they provide two kinds of pools, an identity pools and an user pools. And for this authentication video, I use the user pools. So you can see the CDK stack has been successfully deployed. And in our user pools, we have a to-do app. Even though this is a CDK course, but there's some steps that we still need to do it manually. And the first thing to use our user pool is to create a domain. So if you look at the application client, you can see that we have all the basic setup that is recommended. But they say here, the hosted UI isn't available and we have to create it now. And we can't do this from the CDK, so we use the UI for this. We go to the Domains tab. And this domain can be your custom domain. If you have one, you can click here. But for me, for the demo of this video, I will create a dummy domain. Let's say to do cloud native and i check availability oh it's available so i just set the chains so if your domain is successfully created if you go back to the app client settings 
and you scroll down you can see there's a button say launch hosted ui and the aws they also provide some ui customizations such as you can put some logo here and some label some text description but for now i will go for the basic so if i go here you can see it prompt me to another domain which is i just created to do cloud native auth and i go to sign up i just use my own email address They will send a verification code to my Gmail. So in order for you to confirm your account. So after we successfully create our account, let's go to our Postman to set up the login to, to our application. So if I hit the, our endpoint now, the get help endpoint, let me see. As you can see from here, the message is unauthorized because now in our endpoint, we already provide the authentication to it. Let's implement a login request.
So I just finish create the login request. So this URL is set by the Cognito IDP. So whatever region you guys are in, for me, I'm in Sydney. So it's going to be up southeast, uh, that's two. And in the body, I create a dummy variable request body. There is a pre-request script, which is the script will be run before the request. And the test, which is the script will run after the request. So in the script, the pre-request script, I get the client ID, username, and password from the envir environment variable. And I create a body from it. And that body will be used in our body here. As you can see from here, PM is stand for Postman. Set the environment variable, request body, as the body I created here. And if I make the request now, in the response, I have two, two token, which is an access token and an ID token, and also an ex extra token called refresh token for you to refresh your token. The type of the token is bearer, and the token will be expired in 60 minutes. And once the request is finished, I set up the environment variable cognito ID token and access token as from the response. As you can see from here, I create a couple of new environment variable, the request body for the login request body, cognito client ID. I will show you guys where to find this. If you go back to the AWS console in the user pools under app client, you see an ID here. This is the one you need to put in the Postman collection. And the username and password will be the one you use to sign up in the hosted domain you just created earlier. And Cognito access token and the ID token is this one will be set after the login request. Now I go to the collection. I click on the authorization. I choose a type of authentication as O2. And the asset token will be the Cognito ID token. And the type it is bearer. And this one will be used for all the requests inside this collection. So if I go to the get health one now, the request, for now it's still unauthorized. But if you go to the authorization and you go inherit all from parent, same. Oh, actually, because in the to do app collection, I haven't saved. So if I go, he's saved here. And you go to get help. In the authorization, you can see that in the headers, there's a new field called authorization, and the bearer is a tie of the authentication and the token we get from the login request. If we hit send the request now, in the so the request is success, like from the beginning of the video. And that is it for this video. We have successfully deployed our Cognito using CDK and set up a new user and create a Postman request for it. I will also update the Postman collection code inside the GitHub repository. And that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video.